Und Action! Hi, people. Uh, the next lesson on the Hubert Lubert. This is actually the concluding part of the Hubert Lubert series on the level one. And we are going into arm bars. And uh, before I'm going into a lot of babbling, they say an image says more than words. Maybe you see those markings and new technology applied in the filmmaking. Oh yes, we have floor markings right from Hollywood. Uh, but without further ado, let's go into some action and do the babbling while we act. First thing, my wife learned a new armbar. And as you can see, the way we are doing it right here is human dummy practice. She just has because what I do is, I put my arm out, I allow her to put all her hands into the right place and to make the step and just drag me in. So this is just the first step and yes, this is just human dummy practice. Me being the human dummy, again please. Uh, yeah. And of course we can do it the other way around. Look mama, I've got two hands. Yes, please. Thanks. And yes, in the beginning stages, when she learned this, I let her do it. Meanwhile, she is good enough to be able to do it. But that was just the first step, and I wanted to cover it for sake of completeness. So what we do is, we have one hand. My right hand is on her right wrist. My left hand is on her right elbow. I'm standing here and my right foot is making a wide back arc, bringing her into the lever. And that is basically all we practice. People from Jiu Jitsu, from wrestling, from Aikido. So, people with a lot of background in the martial arts should know this. And I just cover it briefly because this is just the foundation for what we are going to do. Because the drill that we are actually going to do looks like this. So, what to do 
Is this then a fake drill? No, it's not. Because what I can do, and there is no way she could stop me, is turn my arm. And when I just turn my arm, then it bends. And it has a much stronger tendency to bend than I could have with my bicep. Don't trust, don't, uh, don't trust my word on it. Try it out for yourself. Hold me. Stretch my arm as best as you can. When I turn my arm, first of all, she cannot stop me turning. Okay, she has me in a monkey grip. Take me in a full grip. There is no way on God's green earth she could stop me from turning my arm. And when I turn my arm enough, it will bend. That is the one half of the thing we need. Now my arm is bent. Now she has effectively lost all the leverage. Now when I step through, Okay, now we do a little wandering, so you see from this side. When I step through, suddenly we are here. And now, just by sinking my elbow, I'm freeing myself. Now this, my left hand comes up on the elbow, and we are on the reverse. Now she is turning her arm in, stepping through and returning the favor. And you see how quickly she gets me over the point of no return. And what saves me is body contortion, a twist step, and twisting my arm. So my whole body is coiling, stepping, levering, she is coiling, stepping, and up we go. So as you can see in the beginning, this is a slow practice but one that acts with lots of pressure and power involved from the beginning. And yes, you go slow and without too much pressure. I know, I just said it's a lot of pressure and then I said too much pressure. Uh, but first you have to learn how to do that. Because it consists of turning the arm so I can get the bend. And I also need to get my arm close to my body. Only, even with a bend, I cannot get my arm close to my body when she's standing behind. Not going to happen, so I need to bring my body close to my arm. And that is why I need to make the step. So, on the drive, the movement looks like this. I'm stretched out. I'm turning in, stepping, turning again, stepping, turning again. Going for the leverage, using this, turning back, and now the positions are reversed. So in the drive, again, that's what happens in the drive. This is part of the drill. Now, of course, we can do more. Do it to me again. Yes, please. And as you can just saw here, I first did a step and a turn before I went to anything else. Now she does the same. I can go here and make a change. But we will go into the changes later. Because there is something else. Do it again to me. Yes. I can go into a figure four lock. Again. She does it to me. And instead of going for the bend, obviously she is really stronger. Imagine again, she is stronger than me, and I don't get her right and she wants to bend her arm, I can as easily go for a figure four lock. And she already does. She can make a change here. And uh, now it's not a side change, and, uh, but it's a variation. So what we get here is a way for her to practice getting out of the figure four lock, a way for me to sense whether I better go for the arm level or the figure four. 
a way for her to get something like this. So you see when you start doing variation on the stuff, that it is a very rich drill that goes far beyond just a counter for counter on an arm level. Now in order to complete it, we also need a side change. So again, she does it to me, and note, she got me on my right arm. Right? Do it again. Still my right arm. See that I have her here. She is stepping through. Yeah, go, go for it, go, go. And now, before she gets me, I let go through the undercut and have her here. Again. She does. Yeah. Now, exactly if her back was uh, preventing us to see anything. Let's make a 90 degree turn. Now, that should be better. Yeah. You see me here. She is doing the same thing. Stop. You see? Her hand has not yet gripped me. I go with it to the undercut that we know from the hubat. Go here and have her on her left arm. Do the lever. She is turning in. And now also she got me on the left arm. And there you have a side turn. You can do the whole thing with the figure four. And stuff on the left side. But you will figure that out. Instead of waiting on that, I will show the change once more, because that is the crucial element. Uh, so that we can do it on both sides. So again, she has me, does the arm bar, I'm doing the change. She does the next change. Then no, not to turn. Yes. And if she has got me already here, it's too late for the change, so I have to go for another round. Yeah. Now, the, the critical element being, we are here, she has not yet gripped me, she is coming up, and I am sweeping her away, getting things done. Again. Yes. So, that is the one thing. I think you see the great value that this has. I might add that this drill, first of all, although obviously first we start out with petty, petty stuff, where we let them do it, this quickly allows us to apply more force. Specifically, what we want to practice grabbing with two arms, like this. You know those escapes from grabs. What we want to practice is, hold me, is to turn our arms. And what we also want to practice are all those little grab me. You know what you use, what you normally learn first in the self-defense class is this. I'm getting out here, again, grab me with the other hand. I'm getting out here, grab me with two hands. I'm getting out here. All these hand releases come in extremely handy when we practice this drill. They are just very useful. So, when whether you ask why do I have to learn these hand releases, nobody ever attacks me like this. That's true, but they are extremely useful in later stages of the practice. And, uh, yeah, but that was a side track. The actual track was we can use this kind of stuff later on when we go more into the really close and personal stuff. And this will in later stages become extremely useful when we are talking about match defense. I'm not going into this now, but this sets some of the foundations we need to actually apply this whole stuff against the knife. But, and this has to do with the knife, a more obvious application that comes to mind is this is something we need for counter trapping. If she makes the wooden dummy, uh, the human dummy for me for a moment, 
we all know this kind of reference point stuff. I slap her and go in, and all this kind of trapping stuff. Or I go in here, drag her and go in. Now, if she does the same thing for me, slap my elbow and punch. Exactly. Again. Again. Good. That is how we, this is how I'm supposed to react. Now, if I'm very well versed with this drill, do it again. That's what's going to happen. In other words, this drill, do the arm lever again. Yes? This also prepares me for counter trapping. In other words, for the great art to counter all the kinds of traps known in Wing Chun, in JKD, and so forth. This actually is a crossover between the Filipino martial arts and Tai Chi, because Tai Chi has a lot of movements and stuff in it that counters traps, and this is one of it. So these again. No, I meant the trap. Und? Exactly. So again. You see, I do nothing. If I am well versed with this arm bar counter for counter drill, then this happens automatically and the whole trap dissolves into thin air. And I can go in for an arm bar myself or for a punch. And the same is true if she decides to and how? You know? If she decides to go for something like this. Again, I'm also suddenly in it. Now this does no longer look like the drill anymore, but I built it from the drill. You look, my elbow is in the vicinity of her face, she is off balance, I am not. So all kind of stuff, I could go into a figure four, so all kind of stuff flows from this drill. So again, this drill is a shell from which to build and not an end in and of itself. That being said, this is very good for counter-trapping. And counter-trapping is something that we need, because you can... Now, this is my trusted tactical flashlight, let's for a moment pretend it is a knife. You can, of course, train defense against knife attacks that come in like this, no, like this, <laughs> like this, like this, like this, or a high angle number five, or a low angle number five. And all this is legitimate. It all consists of what Bruce Lee would refer to as a single direct attack. That happens with the knives. And that is what most knife defenses, naked hand versus the knife, go. However, please assume a defensive position. Come here. If she, come if she does something like this, and I go in for the prison bar brush, I am effectively, yes, trapping her and coming in with a knife. So, if she doesn't know how to counter-trap me, she's lost. Dead. End of story. So, as a matter of principal consideration, we need to be able to deal with, do anything to me. We need to be able to deal with traps and to counter traps. And besides the wrestling aspect and the close up and personal aspect that this drill has, this also has, and I cannot stress this enough, a counter trapping aspect that you will develop more and more out of it. Okay, I can take her here. That's another story, and that was a mean trick. But again, it is something that comes out of the drill. She doesn't know how to deal with it yet. But uh, basically, that was a matter of timing. Had her timing been a wee bit better, she would have continued the drill. So again, you see, you need practice with that, obviously. And again, for everybody who wants to make an inappropriate comment, you know that I'm not a big fan of rehearsed practice. So most of what we do is learn live while we are filming because that allows me to see the difficulties in teaching and learning that stuff. 
see, now we got it better. Changes are always a bitch. That's just how it is. And yes, we are not going full throttle yet. But this is for learning. And we are also not going as tight as possible, otherwise the camera wouldn't pick up anything. Uh, now let's go through a brief recapitulation what we have done so far. We have done the normal Hubert and in the whole series that is. We have done changes. We have done the Hubert on this level. We have done it on the lower level. We have done a variation of the last drill, which by the way you can immediately see how that ties into the last drill we made. As you can see we can also make it like this. We have with Fabian done some one-handed Hubert Hubert drill, which also comes handy for this drill. And uh, we have done lamentably little in terms of how to pull applications out of the hat. So instead of going to quote-unquote advanced stuff, the next part, the level 2, will cover the question of how to pull applications out of all these drills. But I wanted to put this drill in Although it is pretty advanced, because it allows for so much really close quarter stuff. What got her confused was the point that I didn't have her like this, but like this. And again, she is still learning that, so something new still gets her confused, like with every beginner. But you go on practicing with that and it will go barely unnoticed because there is no great difference between this and this. And she would have just flown through it. Uh, so practice this. I know this is not quite as simple as what we have done before. And maybe I have to go in it again. What we need in terms of body mechanics to pull that off is really this, we start with the hands pointing down here, this turning motion, rise, drill, overturn, fall, rise, drill, overturn, fall. Because what I do when she has me in the armbar, go for it, is exactly this motion. I sink my whole body go for this motion and go along with her drag. And uh, the only way how I could do this is with a turning motion, with a torquing motion of my arm. Like I said, I cannot muscle my way out, I can only turn, tur torque and twist my way out. Uh, this was not quite as systematic as I had hoped it to be, but on the other hand it is a very advanced subject. I would have hoped to do this with a camera person, I have to do it with a tripod, so I'm severely limited to the angles again. I actually had wanted to include a shot from above, but I won't do it. The ceiling of the room is too low, my tripod isn't high enough, and there is no way I'm going to build up the rig outside because it's freaking hot. So I apologize for the incompleteness, but I think that's it for today. I will just give a short, brief uh, introduction on what is to come in series in the level 2, where I said I will put um, applications out of it. Let's take a look at the vertical ginting, as it's also called, or the punch drill as I call it, which you know as this movement. Now, let's break it down as what it could mean. Come again. 
This could be an intersecting branch. So, again, see if I miss it, I'm in here, but that is also advanced stuff. Come again. This, so far, was just a slab entry. But of course, there is nothing in the world preventing me to use the slab entry to make a hit. And this is just the first movement of one, two, three, four. So this is already a hit. One, two, three, four. So you can turn each and every one of them into an attack. The same if you are on the inside. Come. One, two, three, four. It is still the basic, it's just out of the shell of the huba luba. So, or again, give me a straight punch, or, or it's not about, it doesn't matter. I have this, and it is not, I could hit her here, I could use a hooking motion. Or I could hit her here. Those are the guntings. So I could also go punch, gunting, elbow, push out of balance, push out of balance more, which is the slap control, and go for the feet. So there is all kind of stuff, nasty and ugly close up personal stuff we can do out of these shells. There is also more Aikido like stuff that we could do out of this shell, which we hinted at right now. There is so much that you could pull out of these drills and I will go into what you can pull out of the hat in the level 2 stuff. And so in the level 3 stuff then we can probably advance to sticks and then take a look at knives. I want all that at place because defense against the knife is no small feat. It's no mean thing and the knife is the most dangerous close quarter weapon out there. And it deserves due attention and needs due foundation so that we can have at least a fighting chance to somehow fend it off and maybe get out whatever means we have ourselves or get a chance to run because the knife is so dangerous. Again, I do not want to do this with a live blade, but you know, if I punch my wife, now she's out of the danger zone. There is not much I can do until I have rechambered. Such things as a nasty, dirty boxing techniques aside. But basically, if she manages to evade this, she is out of the danger zone. Not so with a knife. I can still just make a pull cut. You see? A pull cut. And all the good stuff is open. So a knife is so incredibly more dangerous and therefore it needs all the other elements in place before we can even hope to do anything against the knife with bare hands. And the idea is, knifers will often sneak up to you and do something from very close. So, the idea, I will buy a gun, think of the 21 foot rule, or I will deploy my own knife. Yeah, but you first have to deploy it. And probably, Good luck deploying your knife when I have this hidden, walk up to you and suddenly deploy it. Good luck deploying anything but your naked body and your reflexes in a split second. And that is why I am focusing so much on empty hand versus the knife. Not because I think this is a very lucky combination, but I think this is the most probable scenario. Because only in very few instances will we know that a knife is at play beforehand and be able to deploy maybe a blade of our own. And even then it's a risky proposition. But maybe we cannot run, maybe we are cornered. All that stuff. I know I'm preaching, but the subject is important and it is a life and death subject. So, this was more talking than I wanted. I thank you for participating in my vices. And I thank you for looking and listening. Take care, have a nice day. Guys.